Right, so another big part of your business obviously is to buy and, uh, well, buy stock. Um, the question is how would you enter that stock into the system? So I want to show you the lazy way first. Uh, this was designed for one of our customers many years ago simply because they didn't want to go through the whole procedure of entering an invoice. And I want to show you why that's a bad idea. Uh, we have under stock take, you'll see there's an option that says stock take additions, which I'll find now. There we go. All right, and I will carry on with my products that we always play with, and that's the Castle Can argument sake. And I can go and say, fine, I'm buying argument sake 15 on them. All right. In other words, I'm entering a purchase or addition to the system. You could also use the same functionality for subtracting stock. In other words, uh, writing off stock that, that might have broken etc etc so if I say there's 15 in there I can even put a reference in there and I can say invoice uh, one two three four all right and that's it I mean that's as simple as that if you click exit your stock is updated with 15 more than what you had before and if I go to my castle can uh, sorry over there and I go and look at my history then immediately my stock would have increased with that 15 items uh, that I just purchased okay you'll see also here that it doesn't show up under purchases because a stock addition is not a purchase it's an a adjustment a correction As if I want to get the detail of that I can go and say go to download reports reporting analytical stock movement details again uh, for my all right so as soon as I've done uh, sorry as soon as I do the uh, stock movement details you will see that I've got a, a line there for shrinkage. That line will just be updated, so it won't show the individual lines for you. In other words, all the additions that you've done. So I've done a total shrinkage, or I have a total shrinkage quantity of 95 for the day, and that's where my figures come in. So as I said, that's the lazy way. That's the way just to get your stock in. Oh, one more last thing on that, obviously, which I now uh, failed to mention. Um, on that, you'll see that it's a negative shrinking, meaning that it's increased. Remember now that we said shrinkage is by default a positive uh, number. So if it shows a negative, it means that your stock has become more than it was. And that's why it's showing the negative. Okay, so let's go back and show you the proper way. The proper way of doing uh, an invoice would be to go to order processing. You can either go and create an order first. In other words, you can specify, I am now going to place the order with the supplier. I'm going to phone him, fax him, email him, um, and place the order. Or you can go directly to say, I want to process a GRV. GRV, big word for goods received voucher, effectively your invoice from your supplier. I'm going to say it's a new GRV. Uh, let's just pick a company here, argument sake like brand house. I'm going to say create a purchase order. The invoice number is 10030, argument sake. The total of the invoice is 125 Rand for sake of an argument. And I can go and say low GRV. Now it will by default automatically bring up your products that's linked to this supplier. And again, you might say it's correct or it's not correct, doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you can find it quite easily if your system is set up properly, your database, your products have been set up properly. If there's products that is outside, in other words, you're buying something that normally you would not buy from this specific supplier, in other words, brand now, you can go and click at all stock items and then it will show you the whole list or it will just show you the supplier stock. So if I go argument's sake again to Amstel as a product and I'm buying four cases. Okay, as you can see there, it's got bold, a B and a P, uh, it's called bold and break pack. Um, so as soon as I put in four, it will say four times 24. So the quantity that it will purchase or add onto my stock would then be 96. Okay, um, you, if you wanted to say I'm buying four individuals, in other words, maybe a, a bottle of uh, whiskey or something like that, you might say that, okay, under normal conditions, I buy a case, but today I only want to buy two or three bottles. You can go into the system and say, build break pack. Then it becomes singles, as you can see. All right. Uh, in my case, I don't want to do that. I want to buy the case. Now, obviously, when you buy it, you can then go and type in the um, price. Let's say the price have gone up to 95 Rand. Again, bear in mind that what we discussed on the margins uh, or the margins video, that my costs uh, will now be affected by that amount 
Uh, in other words, the cost of my items will go up depending on how what uh, parameters I've chosen under general parameters, uh, whether it should update that 95 Rand to list cost or to actual cost or calculate the weighted average on the two. And that's the total of it all. It, well, obviously, if the product is uh, VAT, VATable, in other words, there's tax on it, it'll show you the excluding amount, including amount. You would then be able to go next, any return, something, anything that you're sending back to your supplier, which also means that if you just had a credit, uh, you wanted to know I made a mistake on an invoice, you could actually return it all on the same page. So it's the reverse of an invoice. Okay. And then when you get to the last page, very important at this stage to go and say, I want to process uh, the invoice. Okay. If you simply click on exit and let's do that for sake of an argument. Um, I'm going to go back to order processing, process a GRV, and you'll see my invoice is still lying there. So this is a nice way um, if you want maybe some of your staff to manage the system or business for you and system. Um, in other words, they can capture the invoices and so on, but you don't want them, you do not want to allow them to process it unless you've checked it. And you might want to check it specifically to make sure that the pricing has been changed on the shelf, on the product itself. Uh, or alternatively just to have a double check just to stay in touch with what's happening because if you lose touch on the buying that's it you might as well close the doors now um, all right so to carry on with that invoice obviously if I do not want an invoice I can click on delete GRV over here uh, in my case obviously I don't want to do that I want to click on it and it will basically bring up the same invoice again you can modify it change it and when you're happy you then just simply click on process once you process it will ask you then what are you updating are you updating the default warehouse or whichever warehouse you're doing so you can take the GRV straight to the warehouse that it needs to go to all right you wish to commit a goods received voucher into stock yes thank you very much all right and it prints an invoice for you and everybody's happy okay so that's basically how you would enter your invoices obviously the the other leg of the transaction would have been stock would have been updated on the one side and my supplier would also have been updated on the other side. So if I go into brand house now and I print the statement, my invoice uh, would appear over there to say that this is what I've purchased from my supplier. Um, if I want to go and reprint that invoice, in other words, I want to put it into my file or I forgot to print it or didn't choose to print it at a later stage, you obviously can go back into order processing and you'll see we have an option that says print GRV, go to brand house and again, it's highlighted there. You can just simply double click on it and there's your invoice as you performed um, and that's entering purchases enjoy